We're moving on to ranking live action Two Faces. However, if you want to see my other Batman live action villain rankings, links down below like always. We've actually done quite a bit of these. And we're only about halfway done. Yet again, similar to Catwoman and Poison Ivy, Two-Face was also recast in live-action media, as in the 89 Batman movie in Batman Forever. However, similar to the 66 Catwoman and Gotham Poison Ivy, these two Two-Faces are meant to be the same character. Therefore, they only get one spot on the list. Or, well, they were at least intended to be the same character at the time. They've kind of grown away from that due to the fact that the Batman 89 time comics introduced the 89 Two-Face again with a very different context than Batman Forever. But because it was initially meant to be the same character, I'm counting them as the same character. In last place, like Riddler, is Titans, where like Riddler, he cameos in the season 1 finale as a dead corpse. This does technically count as a live action appearance, since he is in live action, even if he's just a dead hand showing his coin. Which is actually the thing that indicates that this is Two-Face. It, it does technically count, but uh, it's obviously lass. Anyways, next bot. Fourth place is Gotham Knight, where the character is played by Misha Collins. This version, like most things in the show, is pretty weird. Harvey's inclusion feels kinda unneeded here. And instead of just being a character to add to the roster to get fans hyped and watch the show, it didn't exactly work as it only lasted one season. His place in the story doesn't really make sense for a DA either, since he's being treated like he's a cop and a first responder, which makes no sense since he's meant to be a lawyer. The character entirely could have been cut out and the show itself would have practically been the same. I do think that the strongest part of this show is probably the Joker's daughter plot, which he is kinda a part of, but yet again, his placement in it is not really needed. Really, anybody could have been Duella's dad. His eventual transformation also, I think, is very poor in my opinion, and his reasoning to be a villain is not as deep as most Two-Faces are. Not even the 66 Batman Two-Face. By the way, that is a reference to the 2017 movie, not the 1966 show. I know Two-Face didn't appear on that show. Although he was actually meant to. We're getting off track. Third place is the 89 Batman movie, as well as Batman Forever, where the character was played by Billy Williams in the first one, and then Tommy Jones in the third one. While I did like Billy's Harvey Dent, enough that he's higher than Gotham Knights, I found Tommy Jones' Two-Face to be too campy for what is meant to be a dual personality character. Instead, he's played as if he's meant to be the Joker, which isn't helped by the fact that Riddler is doing the exact same thing in this movie. <laughs> I do think that there's a level of charm with the two actors just having fun, but the villains they're playing, I don't think it really works. I do think that his aesthetic is pretty interesting. It's a bold choice to do the whole, like, hot pink. But I do think it works for this film. And the times they actually use the dual personality, it's to make a pretty campy line or one-liner or just a joke that doesn't really have any meaning to the story itself. Besides showing that Two-Face supposedly has two faces and we don't really see either personality from each other. And these one-liners to somewhat make a homage to that from the comics, it doesn't do the best it can by showing that there are two different sides of Two-Face, but instead of just simply having the one side of Two-Face make these remarks. He's Two-Face, not one joke face. That was a really bad joke. <laughs> Please don't unsubscribe for that, or dislike this video for that. I can't stop you, and I can't blame you. <laughs> Second place is Gotham. Now, I actually really like this version of the character, but I can't put him first for the key reason he never became Two-Face. Instead, Harvey Dent here is played by Nick D'Agosto. I probably mispronounced that. I am sorry if I did. The character only appeared in eight episodes of the first two seasons, where he played a pretty important role in getting the groundwork for the Core of Owls done. And we even got a brief hint at his dark side, which was never followed up on. That being because the character was dropped hard partway through season 2. It was said that the character apparently just ghosted Jim Gordon once he went to prison. 
And that was the last time we heard about him. Now, the reason why is apparently because they couldn't figure out a way for him to become Two-Face without Batman being present. I don't understand that because Riddler became Riddler and Penguin became Penguin. I would also argue that you don't need him to become Two-Face, you could just have Harvey Dent on the show. Show who he was before he became Two-Face. Which they kind of did, but at the same time they threw it away after only having the character appear in 8 episodes. Which is unfortunate because Nick was actually pretty good in the role. And even though he wasn't Two-Face yet, he still had a pretty notable duality. Being a good person, but he wasn't afraid to go a little dark. But unfortunately, that potential was never seen. That seems to be a pretty common thing for two faces in live action for some reason. And first place is the Dark Knight. While Joker is of course the most known villain from the movie, and rightfully so, its version of two Face, played by Aaron Eckhart, is a good villain in his own right. But, note that I say good and not great. Unlike other rankings where I usually say a character at the number one is great or perfect, I wouldn't say that's the case with this Two-Face. He's the best live-action Two-Face in my opinion, but there's a lot of room for improvement. I think he looks really cool and adds a level of gore to the character which is needed, and is a very strong villain with a pretty notable duality, but a bit of a different one. You see, usually Two-Face is like two separate people, but this time it kind of feels like Harvey Dent was Harvey Dent pre-explosion, but Two-Face is only Two-Face post-explosion. Opposed to Two-Face being both Two-Face and Harvey Dent. Does that make sense? It makes sense in my notes, but it might not make sense out loud. I also wasn't exactly a huge fan of replacing the character of Gilda with Rachel, in this version of which she also dies, instead of being her own character like Gilda. However, this Two-Face does feel very sympathetic, and a villain that you feel bad for even when he's a villain. Because even though he's kidnapping children, he's still a victim of the Joker. So like said, he's a good Two-Face, but not a great one. I do think that Two-Face as a character is best in animation, at least so far, especially in Vitas where the character really did become the character he is now. That show made a lot of improvements to characters, and Two-Face was definitely one of them. Not saying he was not good in the Dark Knight or even Gotham, but they have nothing against b -Taz, I'm sorry. I even like the Batman vs. Two-Face animated movie version of the character. Because yes, it was silly, but it really did deep dive in the character's psyche. And that's my ranking, which you of course can disagree with, and leave your own rankings down below in the comments. I would also maybe like to see a pre two face Harvey Dent in the next The Batman movie? Or just straight up Two-Face? Or even in the Joker movie? There are so many Batman projects on the go right now in live action that I think a live action Two-Face is surely on the way. Well, another live action Two-Face is surely on the way. And that's it. Like always, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!